Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will go in a bit detail about Lambda implementation uh, with Java. In my previous video, I gave you a demo on getting started with AWS Lambda with Java. And in that video, we created a simple handler. So we created this handler and we were passing this name as a input to our Lambda and we were returning a concatenated string back. But in real life, applications uh, our inputs are not that much simpler we generally pass uh, map or list or uh, our pojo classes and there are some inbuilt events also uh, which we pass as an input and we do the processing so we will take a look at that in our video also in real life input to lambda should be a valid json you must have seen on lambda console also when you try to go and test your lambda you get a text editor where you have to pass a valid JSON. Even in our hello world example, we were passing a string value, which is in itself is a valid JSON. So if you go to Lambda console and try to test that, you get this uh, workspace and you can see that, you know, we are not getting any error here. And if you try to pass any invalid JSON, you will generally see an error here. You can see this. So this was our custom input. If I go to, let's say my S3 event. So this is S3 put object. You can see this S3 put object is also a JSON value. So this JSON value is automatically deserialized by a Lambda runtime and we get a Java object. So similar to this input, we also get uh, an output from Lambda. When we return something from our Java code, so this value is automatically serialized and uh, passed back to us in the form of JSON. Now let's look at the method signatures for Lambda. A valid method signature should match any of these four values. Here, put type can be a Java primitive, it can be an integer, or it can be any object, let's say integer class, or your custom objects such as uh, you can say student class. Just make sure that whatever you are returning back can be serialized to JSON. Then the input type. Here input type again can be a Java primitive or a class. Apart from passing only the inputs, you can also pass lambda context. So lambda context is a very useful uh, class given by a core lambda library. I will show you how you can include this in your Lambda functions. Then again, um, you can pass input stream also uh, and output uh, stream. This uh, generally can be considered when your input is not a JSON serialized type. You can pass a stream of bytes to your Lambda and uh, yeah, you can write that as an output stream. Along with that, you can pass context also. So these are the four types that you need to take care when you are creating your Lambda function. So these are some of the important points that you take care when you are creating your Lambda functions in Java. Your methods should be always public and it can be either instance methods or static methods. Your class should be a non-abstract class because we can't instantiate abstract class. You should have a no argument constructor also. Although you can create multiple constructors in, in your Lambda, but make sure that you have at least one no arg constructor. And the last point is uh, a kind of, uh, you know, best practice while creating lambdas. You should always use single responsibility principle. And if you're a Java programmer, you might be aware about solid principles. So think about it. Uh, even if you create three handlers in your lambda function, we know that, you know, when we configure our lambda, we always give only the one handler name, which will be invoked every time when you call your lambda function. Now, this was it from the theory part. So let's move to the demo. I will show you how you can use different input and output types in your Lambda. Let's go to IntelliJ. This was our first handler, uh, which we created for string input output type. This was our string input output. Let's uh, try, let's say Boolean. I'll create a new handler here. Now this is the violation of single responsibility principle here guys. So I'm just doing it for, you know, our demo purpose, but you should always have a single handler in your Lambda. So this is handler Boolean.
and I'm passing just the opposite, you know, whatever we are passing. So this is just for demonstration purpose. I will open my terminal here. I will call ambient clean package. Okay, it's done. I'll open my Lambda and I'll go to code. Again, the same process. I'll upload a jar file here. Now we'll change our handler name. My handler name now is uh, handler boolean. I'll click save. I'll go to tests. And I'll pass true here. As you can see, uh, we are passing true here. We have just put a not flag here. So this is returning as false. Yeah, so this is about uh, passing boolean. Now let's uh, pass something complex here. Let's say we want to pass list of integer and return sum of all the past integer. What I'll do is I'll use uh, Java 8 here. So I would be returning this int value. Yeah. So IntelliJ is giving me another good option. So I will choose that. Yeah, map to int and return the sum. I've changed my method name. Now I'll build it and then again follow the same process. Code is deployed. Now don't forget to change your handler name here. I'll edit this. New name is handler list. So now we have to test our method. Our method takes list of integers as input. Now for passing list of integers as JSON, you can use the square brackets because that's generally we use for the list. And inside that you can pass uh, values. Now this is our list of integers. I should click test now. Yeah, you can see we received the uh, sum as the output, which is 14. You have 5, 4, 9, 3, 12 and 12, 14. Yeah, so this is correct. So this is how you use a uh, list as input and you received the uh, integer as output. Now let's uh, try another method. Uh, let's say I pass a map of string integer, wherein we will pass name and uh, salary of employees and we'll increase the salary by 500 for each employee. I will create a new map. And I will return this uh, updated salary map. I will change my return type here. This should be map of string and integer yeah so this is it from my this method and i'll follow the same process i'll build it and i'll upload my jar file I'll go to test tab. I should be passing a uh, map as a JSON. So uh, by default, uh, hello world had map. I'll just choose it again. By default, JSON is a key value type structure. So this is my key and I will be passing value in the form of integer.
so this is my input map and I'll click test here yeah you can see it's success and you can see the updated values uh, 3500 2500 and 1500 so this is what we passed and we just increased the salary by 500 so this was it from the map but in our real life projects we don't just use these as inputs we also pass uh, POJOs and model objects as our input to the lambda so we'll test it now we'll be passing a POJO class uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a new package here model I'll create an employee class in this let's say I have uh, name of employee and uh, ID also I will add getter setters here and uh, two string method also so now I want one handler wherein I can uh, pass list of employees my handler will receive employee list and what I want to do is I want to return back the employees whose name starts with A what I can do is I can call streams then filter and in filter I want to make sure that only the employees with name dot starts with A and then I will collect this and I can return this okay so this is my handler uh, so again I'll follow the same procedure I'll build this and then upload my jar I will change my handler here I'll just copy and paste from here to avoid any mistake yeah it's done now I can go to test my method here so this is my input uh, JSON here so this is a list I included square brackets here and inside square brackets I have two entries one with name Ajay 101 then Vadhara 102 my lambda should return me only one employee because only Ajay's name starts with A so now I'll click test here we can see that we received only Ajay back let's again test our method by including one more name here Now I'll test and I should get back two employees here, uh, Ajay and Adam. So I'll click test here. Yeah, you can see uh, we received two employees back. So, so this is an example of using POJO in your Lambda. And mostly when you use Lambda in your real life projects, you invoke your Lambda based on some event. For the event, you have these kind of uh, JSON. So these are the inbuilt uh, JSON that we have uh, when we want to test our S3 put. So AWS has also given us one library which has all these events which you see here. Let's say Kinesis data analytics event or let's say uh, batch get job or app sync events or API AWS proxy or authorizer. So there is a library which you can include in your maven dependencies and you will get all these kind of objects pre-built given by aws so if you go to maven and you search for aws lambda events maven you can copy this and uh, go to your form and paste it inside your dependencies 
you can see here we don't have any external dependency of any kind here i deleted the junit dependency also because we are not using that so i pasted here the java events dependency i'll just re import my maven project yeah you can see here uh, we have this uh, java events dependency for lambda and if you go inside that you can see here aws has already given us the classes which can be used as an event so here in the console we saw s3 put test event examples you can check here we have one s3 event we can use this as an input to our lambda so i can give you an example of that also let's say i create a new handler here this handle event method should take an s3 event so i can use this now this event would be of type this so you can see here in the example json we are having list of records and inside every record we have object of s3 and inside that we have bucket and we can get the name of the bucket and we can get the arn of the bucket so let's say that you know we want to create an handler which returns as the bucket name for which event is triggered what i can do here is uh, first of all i can check if my event dot get records is empty or not i should be only going inside this if we have non empty records now what i can do is i can call event dot get records dot get let's say i i want to i know that you know in this json i have only one record so let's say i want to process the record at zeroth index and this should return me uh, a type of record as i explained you inside each record we have uh, something called s3 object and inside s3 we can get the bucket name so what i can do is i can call get s3 here and dot get bucket dot get bucket name so let's say i want to return only the bucket name my return type is string here so what i can do is i can create a local variable so this is a small uh, method that we created uh, which takes s3 event and returns only the bucket name so you can also get object over and you can process the object but i want to make this tutorial very simple to understand so i will be creating future videos to process an s3 event so if you go inside this you can check uh, from s3 you can get the object details also what is the size of object uh, the key from which you can get the object e tag of the object i will just follow the same procedure i'll just package this and deploy my jar file so while uploading this jar file just make sure that the jar file which you are uploading should have the required dependencies also if i go to my jar file here this is my target folder if i open this in 7 zip you can see here we do have uh, you know the required dependencies here uh, we can go inside aws and lambda and runtime events and we have all the classes here so just make sure that you know you the jar that you are uploading is a fat jar that means that all the dependencies that you included in your pom.xml they should be included in your jar also so for doing that you can use this maven shade plugin this is what i have been using maven shade plugin so use this to make a fat jar now my code is updated the next step is to update my runtime settings and update the handler name my handler name here is handle event and i'll save this now i can go to test so instead of creating my custom so i so i'm using the s3 put template here this is pre populated what i can just do is i can just change the bucket name here instead of example bucket i'll say ajay example bucket i am clicking test here we should get the return value as my bucket name yeah you can see here so this is a response from our lambda function 
you can see here there is some typo here i can add x here also for example and then i can again test and i should receive yeah so this is it so guys this is it from the handler input output which you can use with your lambda i want to cover one more thing here uh, the context which we talked about in our ppt so apart from the regular input types that you pass you can also pass lambda context so as of now i am just getting javax.naming.context because i have not included the dependency for lambda context inclusion you have to use aws lambda core library so if i go and open this i can use the latest one so just include this uh, aws java lambda core I'll open my palm. You can see here for now we have these just two dependencies uh, lambda java events and jora time I think which is included by java events. Now I'll just go to my palm and I'll include this new dependency here and I'll just go in the the import. Yeah, you can see here we have uh, java core library also and if I open this you can see here we have one interface here context which has this inbuilt methods which are very useful when you are working uh, in a real life project in production environments because you get very useful information from this context uh, interface and uh, this lambda logger is you know what we need from context for now just to give you a simple demo so what we can do is uh, i'll just include uh, lambda runtime context and uh, context yeah so now when should we use context here so let's suppose that you know you are debugging your lambda and you want to display some additional information in your logs so one brute force way is to you know include sys out here and we can say that you know inside our lambda and let's say i want to print key for our s3 object and what i can do is i can just so now i have included two sys outs here let's say that you know my lambda is bigger and i have 50 60 lines of code let's say i want to include logging statements quite often this is a very bad practice we should not be using sys outs even if you're a java developer you might be aware that you know it's not recommended to use sys out in our production code why because sys out is a i operation it's not recommended at all so what is the solution you can say that you know you can include it's your own log 4j dependency and you can add log statements here lambda has given us a out of the way solution so what you can do is you can call lambda logger you can just call context.get logger here so you have this logger object now so instead of calling sys out here what you can do is you can just call logger.log and you can print whatever you want here also i can include my logger yeah so this is the purpose of context so guys you will be amazed to know that by just removing sys out from your lambda code and replacing that with logger can save you hundreds and thousands of dollars in your aws billing and let me show you how here you can see a simple billing calculator for lambda and i have just entered 50000 requests per hour for our lambda let's just say that you know sys out that we are adding in our code is adding 20 millisecond okay because it's an io operation right and you can check that for a lambda with 50000 request per hour and with 2 gigs of memory it's causing 24 usd and this is included with free tier right this is for only one lambda function you can have hundreds and thousands of lambda functions right so this much cost you can save by just replacing sys out with the lambda logger so that's a very good practice and this should be used by you so now i can just show you in the logs and how these values are getting printed
now I can go and test I'll clear this yeah it's successful now you can see here uh, it says inside out lambda I think <laughs> there's a typo yeah I have typed it out here inside out lambda and then we are printing object key here right you can see here object key is this which we are passing in this event right so this was it guys I hope I was able to explain you something about Java programming in lambda and you can subscribe my channel for more videos thank you so much bye